Now let's look at a one sample proportions test. Just like the other two tests, we can have a null hypothesis that is two tailed or we can have a one tailed test. And again, the null hypothesis always has the equals in it. The alternative is everything else. The alternative hypothesis is what the researcher cares about. So a one sample proportions test can have a null hypothesis that says the population proportion is equal to a certain number. Maybe we think it's 20%. And then the alternative is not equal to 20%. Alternatively, you could have a null hypothesis that says the population proportion is greater than or equal to 20%, and then the alternative would be less than 20%. Or we could have the other tail, which is the null hypothesis, is the population proportion is less than or equal to 20%, which means the alternative is greater than 20%. So the alternative is what the researchers think is happening. When it comes to our proportions test, we have a test statistic, you've seen this before, and it is p hat, the sample proportion, minus p naught, whatever we think the population proportion is, divided by the square root of the population proportion um, estimate, one minus that, divided by n. Now the assumptions for the one sample proportions test are that we have random sampling, we have a binomial distribution, and that our n times p hat is greater than 10, and n times 1 minus p hat is greater than 10. That's wrong. Should be 10. <laughs> that is that we have a sufficiently large sample size in order to approximate the normal distribution. That's what that last particular test is providing with us. And we have talked about confidence intervals already for our proportions test. So again, if you have a, a two sample test, you can have two sides to that confidence interval that goes with it. Um, or if you have an alternative hypothesis that is just greater than or less than, then you just have that half of the confidence interval uh, that you are looking at. So let's try doing a proportions uh, hypothesis test. So suppose the election's only days away and the lady, latest giddy up poll gives Mr. Gerrymander 55% of the vote. Between periods of euphoria, Mr. Mander ponders the question of whether he should or should not cancel the expensive political advertisements planned for the election eve. Mr. Mander knows that polls are subject to sampling error. Should Mr. Mander go ahead with the advertisement? Is it possible that he doesn't have a majority? Although the highly respected poll of a thousand randomly selected potential voters says he will win. Use a significance level of 0.01. So let's walk through the process. First step, null and alternative hypothesis. The alternative is what the researcher cares about. So here we wanna know whether the population proportion is less than 50%. Is it possible he does not have the majority? Which means the null hypothesis is greater than or equal to 50%. The level of significance, how much error are we willing to allow? Here we're specifying that we want to be 99% confident. We want an alpha of 0.01. The next thing we do is specify the test statistic, which is a one sample proportions test. which we could then say here is the test statistic, z equals p hat minus p naught, and so on. The other thing we do is specify the assumptions. We are assumptions here are a random sample, binomial distribution, and a large enough sample size in order to turn that binomial into a sampling distribution with a normal distribution. So n times p hat greater than 10, n times one minus p hat greater than 10. So we would outline those assumptions. The next thing we would do is state our decision rule. So here we are looking at a lower tailed test because we're looking at a P less than 0.05. So we have a Z score that is dependent on alpha, alpha here of 0.01. Okay, so we will need to find that critical value of Z when there's 0.01 to the left. And then what we will do is we'll find our test statistic and compare. So our statement here is that we will reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is 
is less than the critical value or if our p-value is less than alpha. Okay, so then we need to go about and conduct our test and find out do we get a z that's over here and or do we get a z that's over here. All right, so let's go into Excel and do this. All right, so we don't have a data set here, right? So we'll just have an empty sheet. Let's make it bigger so we can see it. We are going to need a critical value and a test statistic. Okay. All right, so our critical value, we are going to use our z, all right, what was it, z dot inverse, inverse e, why can't I remember what it is? All right, how about norm dot inverse, norm dot inverse, all right, probability means standard deviation, that's not what I want, I want norm s inverse, there we go, norm s inverse, try that again, norm s inverse. All right, norm s inverse is what we want to get us our normal distribution, standard normal, we want to give it a probability. And so here the probability we're giving it is everything to the left. And so we want the everything to the left to be 0.01. So we would expect that this z is going to be a negative number and it's going to be a negative number that's negative two something. There we go, negative 2.32. Then we need our test statistic. So our test statistic is going to come from this formula here. So we need to find our P naught times one minus P naught. And that P naught is what we think the proportion is here, so 0.5. So let's just do pieces of this formula. So we're going to do 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 divided by n, and n here is 1,000. So let's do 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 all divided by 1,000. And of course, if you don't put an equal sign in front of it, you don't get a calculation. Then we need to take the square root of that. Okay. So now we have the bottom part of the formula here, p, 0.5, 1 minus 0.5 divided by 1,000 square root. And then the top piece here is to take the proportion from our sample subtracted by that 0.5. So the proportion in our sample is 0.55. So let's do 0.55 minus 0.5. Put an equals in front of that. Okay. So our test statistic is going to be the, sam or the sampling error divided by the standard error. We get a test statistic of 3.16. Well, that puts us way over here. Okay. So in this particular case, we would reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic was less than the critical value and it is not. So Mr. Mander does not need to go ahead with the advertisement um, that in all likelihood, uh, his probability of winning is greater than or equal to 0.5. But we can't accept the null hypothesis. We simply fail to reject it because perhaps there's something wrong um, with our test or sampling methods. Okay, now we did that in Excel. Let's do that in Python. In Excel, we had to do the calculations by hand. We used that norm, uh, standard normal inverse to get the critical value. We had to calculate the test statistic. Let's go into Python and see how that works. Let's open the right file. Uh, so just a reminder, you can find, and I'll, you'll hear this 20 million times, you can find this workbook at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. Under Supplemental Materials, Hypothesis Testing, you then click Open in Collab, make sure you're logged in, save a copy, make sure you have downloaded your statistics files here, click, download, drop them into your Google Drive, 
Once you are into your Python workbook, you will need to import pandas and numpy, so run that, and then link it to your Google Drive so that you can have access to the files. For this particular test, we don't actually need to import a data set. Uh, we're simply gonna type the information in. So we're down here for a one sample proportions test. And our one sample proportions test, we use statsmodels.stats.proportion, and we simplify that by calling it prop. So import statsmodel.stats.proportions as prop, and then we're simply going to call our test. We're doing a proportions test, it uses Z scores. We need to give it the count, and the sample size. So remember in our sample, 55% voted or said they would vote for Mr. Mander. So that's 550 out of 1,000. The, the null and alternative hypothesis compare the proportion to 50%. So if I just go back to, remember this is a 0.5. So we specify that in our formula here as the next piece, 0.5. And then we have a one-tailed test because recall we are looking at an alternative of the proportion being less than 50%. And so I would go in here and I would put alternative equals smaller, okay? So again, anytime you're doing alternatives, the default is two-sided. If you don't specify, always check because the language is different with different tests. This one is smaller and larger. Some are greater and less. Uh, so sometimes they have different terminology that they've been coded for. So this one is smaller or larger. We want a left-tailed test. We're going to go smaller. And then we run it. We get a test statistic of 3.178, and we get a p-value of 0.99. So going back to our data, our test statistic here, um, it, we got that... Um, 3.178, we could compare that to the critical value, right? You can see the same one compared to the critical value, um, but we don't have to do that because we have a p-value. So instead we can look directly at the p-value and we know if the p-value is less than alpha, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Well, alpha is 0.01, our p-value is 0.99, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis, it is possible that Mr. Mander has more than or equal to 50% of the vote.